Lakeview Terrace is a story about a attractive, happily married, interracial couple who move into their dream home. Hey. Yeah. We're homeowners. They move into this pretty racially diverse neighborhood and realize that their neighbor is not so welcoming. He doesn't like them. He doesn't approve of them. He wants them out. And oh yeah, he's a cop. Oh! Cop, there's some entitlement that he takes. That is not okay. You find these two people at their breaking points, and we get to watch them negotiate that. It's really about a relationship on the verge of souring because of what's going on between them and what's going on around their home. Look, please. Wait, let go of me. I'll deal with it. I'm just pushed and pushed and pushed to the edge, and ultimately, a break. You have to do what I say! These young people just happen to move into the wrong neighborhood at a particularly bad time. We're not moving. What attracted me to Lakeview Terrace immediately was the idea of doing a Los Angeles story was interesting. Um, and I think race definitely is of interest to me. You know, you can listen to that noise all night long. When you wake up in the morning, you'll still be white. It was a compelling story with an interesting sort of twist in terms of who was the, I guess what we would call the racist in the film, a person who kind of anti one particular race as opposed to another. You know, you never want to set out to do a movie that's, you know, this is the statement we're making, but it's nice when you do a movie that that you can read and it can reflect a lot of things going on socially. You know, I mean, I don't think he likes the, the idea of us together as a couple. Did he say that? In so many words. What draws me most to a project is, is the characters' stories, and I really liked the idea of seeing this couple on screen. We haven't really seen a modern, hip, interracial couple ever, really. I always wanted to say this. What? Honey, I'm home, owner. No, it's really bad. No, it's bad. The first, say, 15 minutes of the picture really kind of set up what's going on. You know, I really wanted to see a solid relationship that I could then chip away at. You know, for me, as a, as a writer, as well as a director, I'm always looking to come in and go, oh, you think you have a good relationship? Well, now I'm here. You gotta be kidding me. I was really thrilled when I heard that Neil was gonna direct this movie because the films that he makes, the plays that he writes, are so excruciating to sit through in a good way because you're just so incredibly uncomfortable by the situations that he creates. Action. I am a police officer. Neil, he wrote a lot of stuff in the script. It fits in our mouths very well. And on a day-to-day -day basis, he lets us kind of do the things that we need to do to bring some sense of reality to what we're doing and some honesty. He knows how to establish the complexities of relationships. I need you to back off. Back off. Especially from a man's point of view, he always gives men such really rich characters. I said I was sorry. Stay out of my life. Stay out of your life. Sam Jackson's character, on one side we see him as a father and a widower trying to bring up children, and a lot of what happens with him doesn't seem so outlandish in terms of I'm protecting my kids from seeing certain things. Abel and Chris and Lisa, they're all pretty normal people, but they, they just have suddenly had the, all of the pressures of the world thrown on them. We are now all three of us, Chris. I really need you to start thinking that way. The pairing of not only how do I live with the neighbor next to me, but I'm suddenly finding out who is this person I'm living with. When a crisis happens, I guess that's the crucible. You know, we always find out who we are, you know, and I think that's what this does. It magnifies the young man in, in the marriage, you know, his shortcomings and the qualities that make him turn into a man. They're slashed. Even though color plays a big role in this movie, Lakeview Terrace isn't so much about race as it is about space, about personal space. Stay down! 
And don't move! The movie is about what do you do, what are you capable of doing, both good and bad, to defend what you think is right. It's sort of a human tragedy in a way, you know, Abel is sort of a tragic figure. Get back! Come on! And the story itself you know, plays out as a little slice of Americana, interestingly enough. At the heart of it is really that simple Rodney King, can't we all get along? And I think the movie ultimately says, barely. Turner, which is brilliant casting. Well, come on over. Come on. Stop. Come on, bring it on over here. Come on. One of the reasons why I took the job was to work with Sam. I've always been a big fan of his. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, why don't you bring it to my house? Abel's been a police officer for 28 years. He's raising two kids, a teenage daughter and a young son. What the hell's going on up here? You're supposed to be looking out for him. I wasn't doing nothing. He has some definite ideas about the world and how it works, and there's some level of cynicism. Wait, Whatever we want to do, that's all right, that's right? Enough. How you say it, baby this girl? Let's get point. Hell. This is sick. Okay. Sam was already attached to the material before I got involved. Had that not been the case, Sam would have been the first person I would have thought of because he really can slip back and forth between playing the flat-out bad guy Dude, I'm so so and someone who's really winning and, and charming. Abel, please. He's charming, he's menacing. I was psyched. I thought, this is exactly the right guy for this part, and he was. Hi, Lisa, how are you? He's so charismatic and likable. And, you know, that's what Sam does. He plays these amazing, intense characters that you always love, no matter what. Say the word. He's a guy whose presence registers on the set, and you want to do well, sort of like you want him to like you. So you're kind of going out of your way and doing your best work. This is the, the guy with the wallet that says badass. Bad mofo is not a word. <laughs> Comes in the territory when you work with Mr. Jackson. Whoa, who put you on the VIP list? It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm trying to sleep. Oh, come on, Chris. Hey, I'm glad you came over. We can bury the hatchet. Like the best actors that I've worked with, he is somebody who makes it seem really easy, and it's not always easy. Whatever he does, whatever his preparation is, he's just effortless. Knowing all his lines and knowing the character so well, it's completely full of effort, but you never see that. He comes in, he does it. If you want another take, great, I'll do another one. If you don't want it, I'm fine. Well, Chris has got himself a little dark meat over there. It's a real lesson in acting for film, because he's always, he's always ready. I'm just busting your balls. You know, once you go black, Never go back. There you go. <laughs> Ultimately, it ends up being as much Abel's story as anybody's. So I think that having Sam as a rock and an anchor in the you know center of the picture was a lucky thing for us. Chris, wait. Chris, wait. Well, I play Chris Matson. He's just moved to the LA area with his wife, Lisa. I'll do whatever it takes to make you happy. Well, what we ended up doing with Chris's character was taking him to the sort of the nth degree of what we thought would be the opposite of Abel. And Patrick is a guy who couldn't be kind of more the prototype of what I imagined. Everything about him, his demeanor, his size, his approach, his background, he couldn't be more white guy. Chris, what's up? Abel, yeah, well, hey, um, your lights. <laughs> oh, you know, I did not get to that today. I could not have been happier when I found out that Patrick Wilson was doing this movie. I just think he brought so much to this character and, and to the dynamic between this husband and wife. It's going to happen here, I promise. He's the kind of actor that inspires me to be a better actor, because when I watch him work, I go, oh my goodness, I'm going to look really bad if I don't do my homework. I was the one giving him the better. You don't time. know him. I just walked around the whole neighborhood with him. You don't know him. Well, Patrick's great. He's 
very conscientious of the other actor and wants to make sure that you know, everybody's comfortable. Because we kind of connected in that way, we were able to let go in a very interesting sort of way when we had our really angry stuff. Yeah, I'm right here. Come on, bring I'm right it. here. Come on. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. Come on. With Patrick, he was someone I was pretty steadfast about. I, I was just kind of hammering away at this is the guy you really want to get. And uh, ultimately, he got lucky and he joined the cast. What about your pills? I might have missed a few, maybe. Whether you did or you didn't. I did. I play a woman named Lisa Matson. The thing about Carrie, the thing about the way she's played this role that I didn't really see on the page is she has such an optimism about the relationship between Lisa and Chris. Mm -hmm. Even scenes that I thought maybe played more serious or something, or maybe this is going to be a little darker in the scope of things, and she would just bring this freshness to it. <laughs> I'm going to go talk no, to him. I'll, I'll do it. Here, no, no, because... Please, let, let me handle it. What I like about Carrie's performance is that she's very strong. Oh and I really believe this relationship and this love that she has for Chris, that it sort of goes beyond color. Okay. Let me know if you need any help. Okay. She's a very warm person. She comes on the set, and the temperature kind of fits where she's at. Great energy and just kind of, you know, let go, abandon. Oh, hey, wow. Anybody got any signals? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. When you're in a business where you're constantly hearing the clock, everybody's going, God, what time is it? What time is it? It's nice to have somebody come on, and it appears, at least, that time sort of stands still. You know what? It's not that big a deal. Who can then concentrate, give a great performance, and not have to go sit in a corner and brood? If he's going to be your boyfriend, you should probably really like him. OK. <laughs> OK, we've got well, we all have this kind of great facility for not walking around in character all the time. So it's kind of like when they say cut, all three of us could kind of find something else to do or just talk about anything or kind of laugh and do something else, which kind of relieves some of the tension because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty tense script. I'm telling you, the lights aren't going off, okay? <laughs> I got lucky and worked with a bunch of good people. Cut. Cut. summer in Walnut, long drives back and forth to location, kind of warm out there. It was a little bit like shooting on location because we all spent an enormous amount of time together in what seemed like a different planet. <laughs> shooting up there. <laughs> There's a lot of levity on the set. It's not like, you know, very serious and everyone's pissed off at each other. It's just a nice, easy going set. We all get our stuff done. Everyone goes home happy. Okay, can you do it one more time? Mellow set is pretty important when it's 112 degrees would not be a great time to have a shouting match with somebody out in the street. Connery Travolta, Saturday Night Fever. Um, we're trying to ask you. What? It's Neil. He's great. I mean, he's just a real positive energy on set. He's very funny. For someone that can have such dark writing, to be so uh, happy is always, a, I'm always interested in that. Where did you come from? Where did all those thoughts come from? This, uh, Let's wait until dark to see how much you failed. <laughs> we can tell you failed, but we can't tell how much yet. He works at a nice pace. Most of the things I, I, I've done were like one or two takes. That's it. We got one take of the gunshot. It worked. Let's move on. He really respects everybody in their various positions, and he wants everybody to do their best job. And to me, that's the most important thing about a director, being able to hire the best people possible and then let them have their genius. And you see him do that with every department. Yes. Let's try it. See what that looks like. We had very good stunt people. But we used them precious little because we were able to use the actors because I think they were excited by the process. Sam is awesome. He went down to the ground with us uh, yesterday, at least four or five different takes. He's been around forever and he's got some great suggestions and some great ideas. And you were good with that, right? That guy. It's always nice when you have actors who are really good athletes and are very physical, and Patrick is definitely one of them. <laughs> right now, the scene we're setting up is where uh, Patrick has to bulldog Samuel's character, and he's going to do it himself. Action. <laughs> 
done. i don't have too much history in terms of stunt work and action scenes, but the ones i've done, i've tried to make believable and 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 feel very human. back, back. when he turns him over, you go up to his face. yeah. well, with neil, the main thing is that the stunts need not look like stunts. everything needs to be real and gritty and where it, it doesn't look like it's choreographed at all. and that's what we've done. there was a technical advisor here that worked with samuel, since sam was supposed to be a veteran lapd officer. it was a complete opposite with patrick's character, chris, who has probably never handled a gun before, a weapon or self-defense or anything at all. and he's done a great job to sell that. i've been very, very fortunate. all of them have been fantastic, including carrie, even though she complains, she doesn't do a lot of action. they wouldn't let me do the car crash, sadly. <laughs> this uh, vehicle here is the, uh, I guess you'd say the crash E. Um, We've prepared it with a bunch of cuts in the uh, B pillar or reliefs that weaken the uh, the body and kind of caves the entire side of the car in like uh, like an old beer can. I have two riggers come in. They do a walk through the vehicle. They make sure there's a fuel cell. Basically, a fuel cell just keeps enough fuel in the vehicle to get you from point A to point B and keep it safe at impact. This is so exciting! Out in the car. Car's going hot. Thought that was beautiful, boy. Okay. Thumbs up, she's good. Bruton Jones, Rohir Stouffer, the director of photography, Lynette Meyer, the costume designer. All those kind of creative visual people were very much on board with a style that I wanted to use, which was that we tried to pull as much blue and green out of the film as possible. We needed it to feel like it was hot and that fires were possible. We knew our underlying subtext and design and psychology of the film was that we were going to go yellow, and so we played a lot interior-wise with a lot of yellow bases, the base of the, the color of the paints sort of put orange, yellows, and reds throughout the house, just subtly so that you can see it in the background. It's kind of like theater. We, we sort of created the whole cul-de-sac kind of like a stage, you know, sort of a homage to Neil a little bit. Those kinds of things are fun to do as a group, to have some visual notion to rest, you know, your themes on. No, I think you're good right there. So I think that on the house is good. <laughs> the backyard was a challenge in itself. It was basically 80 by 100 of nothing but desert. We landscaped the whole interior with sod and natural grasses and plants that was indigenous to the area and sort of planned it accordingly. I think we should do the same thing, but now closer with two cameras. That's it. One on each side. Profile on each side. That's, 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 that's much more useful. useful. This crew on this movie is just great. Rohir Stoffers and knows exactly how he wants to shoot it. And it's such a great vision on Disturbia that it's sort of exciting to know that you're in those hands. It's our last day today. And you know, everybody's a little melancholy because it's really been fun. For me, I don't want the, the product to be great in spite of the process. I like everybody to enjoy the work. I just think that brings about better work. It's nice to work with people who understand script, understand the process. I couldn't have been more happy. Very good cast, very good crew. We got a lot done in a short amount of time, and I think we have a compelling movie to show people.